We previously looked at the energies of the H2+, the hydrogen molecular ion, which is the simplest molecule you can possibly get, where we have two nuclei and one electron. So after looking at the energies, <clears throat> we're now interested in looking at what the wave functions are and what this means in terms of molecular wave functions and chemical bonding. Okay, so we have our uh, Hamiltonian here, and we have our two basis functions. They're each a 1s orbital centered on each nucleus, nucleus A and nucleus B, psi A, psi B. And our wave function is a trial function which has some parameters, which is a linear combination of these two basis functions, psi A and psi B. And we use the linear variational method, which solves uh, the equation HC equals ESC, being the Hamiltonian matrix, overlap matrix, uh, the coefficient vector for each, uh, w each state, each wave function, and our energies here. We have two basis functions, so we'll get a 2 by 2 Hamiltonian, 2 by 2 S matrix, a two coefficients in our coefficient vector, and two different energies for each, one energy for each vector. So we solved the secular determinant where H minus ES, the determinant of that equals zero. So now we want to solve for the values of the coefficients CA and CB for each state. So we can use this equation here, H minus ES times C equals zero, according to this matrix form of the Schrodinger equation up here. So we're going to have, uh, from what we had last time, from what we had last time, we're going to have HAA minus E. I'm going to use the simplified elements that we discussed, the reason why these are what they are last time. And then HAB again, minus E SAB, HAA minus E. So that matrix times the vector CA, CB is going to equal a zero vector, a vector whose elements are all zero according to this equation. Okay, so this would give us two equations, two unknowns. We have this times this plus this times this equals zero, and uh, this times this plus this times this equals zero. So that gives us two equations which we can solve for our two unknowns, C A and C B. And if you go through the math of working that out, what we can choose is a following solution like this. C A equals one, C B equals plus or minus one. So that gives us that our psi, which we have psi plus and minus, our two states, we're going to call them this because they're going to be psi a plus or minus psi b, according to the coefficients 1 and plus or minus 1. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, we need to make sure that this expression is normalized. So we're going to look at what is the integral of psi star psi should be equal to one and if it's not we needed to choose an appropriate normalization constant to make it one okay so expanding this in terms of psi a and psi b we have in the bra psi a plus or minus psi b and in the ket we have again psi a plus or minus psi b Okay, so this is going to give us four individual terms. We're going to get psi star a, psi a, that integral, plus, plus or minus, according to this, psi a, psi b, plus or minus psi b, psi a, and then plus minus times plus minus gives us just plus. We have psi b, psi b. Okay, so according to this, um, we've said that our individual wave functions are normalized. Psi a and psi b are normalized. So psi star a, psi a, that integral is just going to be 1. Similarly, psi star b, psi b, that integral is going to be 1. And these two integrals in the middle here, psi star b, psi a, psi star a, psi b, that was the integral that we defined to be s a b in the previous video. So what it looks like is we have psi star psi is 2 times the quantity 1 plus or minus s a b, the overlap of these two functions here.
All right, and that makes sense. So whenever we have our wave function, our psi star psi integral over all of space, we have our normalization constant is always going to be just minus uh, that to the minus one half power because we want psi star psi to equal. We want uh, this normalization constant squared times this integral to equal one, and that will make that true. Okay, so then we're going to have. Uh, for our final result here, we have that our wave function, psi plus minus, is going to equal psi a plus or minus psi b over the square root of 2 times the quantity 1 plus or minus s a b. Okay, so again, plus or minus each uh, of the component wave functions and then our normalization constant which involves the overlap of these as this distance between the nuclei changes. Okay, that all makes good sense. So what does this mean in terms of the density and what happens for bonding? So the density then is going to be psi star psi, psi star plus minus psi plus, but since our wave function is real for all values of r, we can say that that's equivalent to psi squared squared plus minus. So we need to take this quantity and square it here. So what is that going to give us? We have psi plus or minus squared is going to give us our normalization constant squared, which will be 1 over 2 times quantity 1 plus or minus SAB. Okay, that's all good. Then psi a plus or minus psi b quantity squared is going to give us a trinomial here. Psi a squared plus or minus 2 psi a psi b plus psi b squared. Now the density of individual hydrogen atoms would just be psi a squared and psi b squared. So the real difference is occurring in this term here. So this is going to give us the difference from our hydrogen atom. And then the normalization constant with the overlap ensures that any density that gets transferred into this overlap, that gets transferred into the middle here, gets transferred out of this uh, individual densities of the individual atoms there. So we have this overlap. We're either going to add to it and fill up the density and add to this stuff in the middle here and form a bond or this could be negative and the negative part and that will deplete electron density from the middle here and that will uh, reduce the interaction there and that will result in a net repulsion. So if we graph these two out I'm going to draw four graphs here one for each state, one for the wave function, and one for the wave function squared. So we've got psi plus, psi plus squared, the density, psi minus, the wave function, and psi minus squared, the density of that state. Okay, and we're going to mark where each nucleus is, where nucleus A and nucleus B are in each case say r is increasing this will, well this not really r but some some coordinate we'll call it we'll call it little r for the coordinate of the electron our spatial dimension here along this internuclear axis okay so by themselves these two wave functions would add up to look something like this so the wave function psi you'd have some peak then it'd go down and then up and then down. Individually they tail off but the two add together so you get that little extra bit there when they're overlapping. And then that would be the same thing here. Decays off. Again a little extra bit from the adding together where they overlap. They're the same on the outside. So uh, the individual things by themselves, their, their product there we'd get something like 
Again, I want to do this dotted so I can go over top of it later. Have some density there. And that goes away. We can have the same thing, some density, and that goes away. Okay, so what happens for each of these individual states here? So let's pick a pick yellow here. Okay, so for our plus state, we have a plus here. We're adding density into the middle here. So our wave function is higher in the middle, doesn't decay very much, and then goes down. Here, our wave function is going to hit zero in the middle. It's going to decay very quickly and then go down, go on down to the other side, come back up to zero. So what we have is the density of this <clears throat> decays very little between the nuclei, comes back up, then decays away at long distance. And for our psi star, uh, our psi squared of the anti of the linear anti-combination, there's very little density in the middle there, and it's mostly on the atoms and then further away. Okay, so the important part to notice here is uh, down by this shaded region here, we've got this accumulation of density in here for this plus state where they're adding, where the wave functions are adding together. And down here, we've got this depletion of density in the minus state where the wave functions are subtracted from each other. So we've got this accumulation of density in the positive state, psi plus, and that leads to what we would call bonding. The fact that we build up density in the middle here, in between the nuclei, it's more attracted to the nuclei. This lowers the energy lower than two individual hydrogen atoms, and we get a favorable interaction. That's the potential energy of a chemical bond. So that is the origin of bonding, is this accumulation of density between two nuclei well, in the bond there. And down here, we have a depletion of density in the psi minus state, and this is what we would refer to as anti-bonding. So we are actually depleting electron density between the nuclei here, and it's being pushed to the outsides. So the electrons are less attracted to the nuclei as, as uh, in aggregate, and thus the nuclei repel each other more. And the total net effect is that the energy increases relative to the energy of two hydrogen atoms, and it becomes an unfavorable situation, and that is anti-bonding, and then those molecules want to push apart. So whenever you get favorable bonding interactions like this, when you have more electrons in bonding orbitals than in anti-bonding orbitals, you get a stable arrangement and you get a stable molecule. But whenever you have more electrons in anti-bonding, or the same number in bonding and anti-bonding, then you're depleting electron density between these atoms, and they want to push apart, and it's unfavorable. So this is kind of the very basics of how chemical bonding occurs. We're using the simplest molecule there is, uh, two protons and an electron, to examine this. But these types of general principles hold uh, for more general types of bonds. And as we'll see, uh, gives us very useful ideas that we can apply to uh, larger molecules than this with many electrons.